Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Joni Young and I'm gonna show you all step-by-step -step how to paint this intuitive fantasy landscape. So I'm gonna make this step-by-step -step for you guys. You would all follow along. You're gonna learn so much in this video about how to unlock your own creativity, go with your imagination. You're gonna learn technical parts of painting with acrylics, such as highlighting, shading, color mixing, and applying glazes over or a filter. So I'm gonna go over the canvas, some of the brushes I'm using, as well as the paints, and I'll have a full list below this video in the description box, of course, as always. So starting off with the canvas, I've got an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I haven't done anything to prep this canvas. I just unwrapped it and purchased it um, as is pre-primed already from the store. And I've got the following colors here. Dioxazine purple, phthalo blue, aqua green turquoise, neon pink, lemon yellow, a light olive green, and some white. I like to use titanium white, um, but you can use any kind of white you want, and of course, any colors that you like that are similar to this or to your preference. I um, uh, personally prefer using heavy bodied acrylics, but you know, you can use craft paints as well, thinner paints. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started going over some of the brushes I'm using today. I've got a number 50 filbert brush that I'm gonna be using to apply the colors for the background with first. Then I'll be using a few mop brushes. I'll also be using a liner brush or a rigger brush. This one's a long one. I may switch to a shorter one during the painting as well, but I'll go over that and any other brushes that I may be using during this painting. And I've got a few smaller filbert brushes I'll be using. This is just one here. I may have one a little smaller or even a little larger that I'll be using as well. Use whatever you have and that you feel comfortable with using. So I'm gonna start the painting with getting a little bit of water on my brush first. And all I'm gonna do is just add a little bit to the canvas. This is just gonna make the canvas take my paint better and help me blend all my colors out a little bit more smoothly. The first color I'm gonna be using is yellow. I've got a lemon yellow here, it's a cool yellow. Now you can use any yellow you like or that you have. They don't have to be neons. This is just something I really, really enjoy using myself. So add a little bit of yellow there. Now, it's kind of a large area that I added the yellow to. The reason being is that I'm gonna create some different colors by layering over and mixing um, either blue or pink. So I'll start with my pink first. And I'm gonna come in from the top left corner. You can see it's really cool pink here. And then as it comes in over top of that yellow, it turns warmer and to a soft peachy color. I'm gonna rinse my brush out. So I have a nice clean brush to use to apply the next colors. So I'm gonna be taking some turquoise next. I'll be adding it on the other side. Kind of looks like a rainbow. I just end up doing that, um, not really on purpose, it just kind of happens on its own. The next color, phthalo blue. I'm gonna go along the bottom. You can see I'm not being really overly careful or slow about this. This is just a really free and fun way to create backgrounds for any landscape. And you'll see what this transforms into in just a few brush strokes, colors, and glazing. Okay, so the next color I'm gonna take is my dioxazine purple. And I'm gonna add a little bit right off the corner, left side, bottom corner, and then a little bit off the right corner. I'm gonna take one of my blending brushes, it's dry, and I'm gonna start to soften all those brush strokes and brush streaks 
streaky looks just by dusting over little circles. I recommend blending your light colors first, the colors that you started with first because they're gonna dry the quickest. And if you happen to have that happen where it's completely dry and you're not able to blend like this, you can add just a little bit of water. I recommend um, a fine mist spray bottle that'll give you just a little bit of moisture to your canvas. And you can see here, I'm just starting to blend out what's in my brush. My brush has got a little bit of all the colors in it now. I wanna create some muddy, no, that doesn't sound very nice. A bit of a muddy tone here and there to balance out all these bright colors. So this is gonna give us um, some dimension and just overall a nice balance in the painting. Okay, so now what I wanna do is come in and add a little bit more color. I wanna make this a little bit more intense and saturated. So I'm gonna take a little bit more yellow. I'm using my smaller filbert brush now and I'm gonna layer over here. So this is an interesting process because depending on, you can see this came off, this underneath layer, and I love it when that happens. It wasn't planned, but I always like it when something kind of like that happens because I see something within that. So all of a sudden that looks like an archway, some kind of opening, and down here, I don't know if you guys noticed, end up having a little shape like this. It looks like maybe some light coming from that doorway. So this is kind of like, letting you guys in on how my mind works, how I see things when I'm starting to paint without any ideas in mind first, just intuitively picking colors, blending them, and then um, seeing shapes take place like this. Um, I tell you guys this because it's really important. It will kind of open your mind up and make you look at things a little bit differently yourselves. And then you'll be able to create from your, your own imagination um, the more you watch um, these types of videos and this process. So pay attention to those little ideas that you have, little things that you might kind of see while you're painting. Okay, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to keep that little archway. I think that's really pretty there. I think that was meant to be there, so I don't want to go over that. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more of my pink in here. Oh, we have a little bit more coming off in this area here. I'll use that for something. Not sure what yet. Maybe I could just gently scrub that off and maybe we'll have a second window or doorway here. And then I'm gonna take a little bit my turquoise and I'm going to come down in here and just start adding little circles or half circles just creating sort of a bubbly cloud type of effect a little bit of white a little bit of blue Maybe we'll have a little area here with some green leading into these little doorways. I'm going to take a little bit of purple. And maybe we've got some stairs that kind of come down here and then go up. Who knows? It doesn't have to make sense, but we're making up our own little dream worlds like this. Just add a little bit, very little paint. My brush is quite dry. I'm 
and just go with these shapes and exaggerate create some movement like this is always fun okay so what I want to do now is come in with one of my mop brushes again this one's an angle one I like this because I can have a little bit more control if I need to you know go around areas it's just like half the width of a round one so um and like I said before it gives me a little bit more control I'm going to take some of my, <clears throat> excuse me, light olive green, and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of Daxazine purple. I love this earthy, mossy, deep forest color that I get when I mix the two colors together. And this is just going to be the first base. And I'm going to add a little bit here. I'm going to just kind of tuck this little archway in. Make it thicker here and then turn my brush, tap, tap lightly. Another one like that. And a little bit like this. And then I like to just kind of create some weeping or trailing vines. I think it always adds a little bit of gracefulness. So wherever I have it really dark in the painting, I'm going to go with that for my darkest areas. So again, if you're just tuning in now, I'm just making this up on the spot for you guys. This is one way I really, really enjoy creating and filming, creating content for you guys. It's really fun and I think it's really, really good for you guys to learn how to make your own landscapes up. And feel free to paint this one too. If you're not ready or you don't feel ready, okay, I'm gonna tap, tap, tap in here. Sweep side to side with a brush. See, creating different brush, brush strokes with just a mop brush like this. Very easy to do. And I'm going to use a dry, clean one. This one's a really neat one. This is one of my newer ones here. Um, and I'm, you can use even a filbert brush if you guys don't have um, mop brushes or blending brushes. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of this light olive green here, and I'm gonna start adding it to the top and just kind of off the side here. On the other side of that staircase see how it looks like it's it's going over that archway and inside and what I'm gonna do is because this is actually a really transparent paint this light olive green I'm gonna change that by adding a little bit of white to it so it'll dry to the lighter olive green that I want it to and Make it a little bit softer looking as well. So I do like the mysterious dark green that we have. Not everything should be in full. You don't want to highlight every single thing in your painting. Um, but I also know that acrylics dry darker than what you're putting them on. At. Like when they're wet, they, they look bright. But when they dry, they're going to be darker than that. So that's why I'm adding a little bit of extra highlights here so that it dries to the color I want it to. I love these brushes. You always should have a few sizes of mop brushes. Look, I'm just gonna glaze over here. Thin paint, 
just pulling and sweeping over. These are must-have brushes. Now you can go in any makeup section and find them. Um, I have one I've included in my own line of brushes that should be uh, available very soon, depending on when you're watching this. They come out the first week of um, May 2023. So maybe you have them already. It all depends on when you guys are watching this. Um, and I plan on having um, a full set later on of mop brushes, all just all mop brushes, because I think that they are so important and I use them so much, so often in my paintings. Um, but the first set that's going to be available that I'm coming out with now has one mop brush in it. It's a really good one. And it also has filbert brush, flat brush, round brush, and a liner brush. Okay, so we've got some soft highlights to start with now. This is one of my, anything that I'm using, any of the brushes I'm using with this light purple handle and the gold are from my line of brushes. So this is just the prototype. So there's no, no name or number on it. And that's just because these were the prototypes sent to me. So I've been using these for months to make sure um, the quality is there and the bristles don't fall out and they hold up before um, the actual uh, line of brushes go into production. The ones you purchase will look a little fancier than this. And what I'm going to do, I've just got a little bit of water in my brush from when I cleaned it off. I'm going to take some phthalo blue here, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of my lemon yellow, and I'm going to add... some water somewhere in here. I want to build up the depth first. A little bit of turquoise. Let's add a little bit of that. We have such beautiful light, this softness in here that we can really get away with um, some extra depth along the side. Just going in for a little bit more turquoise, blue, a little bit of yellow. See, I haven't mixed it all up to make one color. purple in with my blue. I love the doxazine purple and blue together. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gently go up and down. I just have a little bit of water in my brush from rinsing it out. Or you can turn your brush sideways, little up and down. Don't worry if you go over some of your little bushes. Whatever's left in my brush, add just a little bit more up here. Going to take a little bit of purple, blue, and add some sort of rocks down here. Just half circles, little lumpy ones, different shapes. Uh, 
out a few here. I'm not over blending or pushing too hard. Um, I do have wet paint underneath, so I just want to be careful and mindful of that. Let me add a few over here as well. And then I'm seeing a staircase in here. So right away, I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, purple, maybe a little bit of that green. And have it just take us down here to this lovely area. I'm sure there's going to be some flowers. And we've got this bridge shape here. So I'm going to go with that and just add a little bit of my purple yellow mixture. a little bit more depth in here just make it a little bit darker a little bit of purple blue see I'm just gonna curl over and gently pull down here show you guys a really cool way of creating um, waterfalls with a brush I don't use a lot. Um, if you've been watching my channel and follow me for a while then maybe you've seen me use an angle flat brush. Uh, it's a little bit wet so the shape is kind of curvy. Um, you do want to have it a little bit wet before you apply the paint or load your brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some waterfalls over these areas, the bluey green areas, and it's probably starting to dry, so I'm going to take a little bit of white, blue, and turquoise. And I'm going to just, actually I'm going to be a little bit more generous with my blue and turquoise. What I'm going to do is start from here and just gently pull. Now you can turn your brush. This is what I love about these brushes, so that you can turn it and fit it anywhere in between things to create waterfalls or the look of waterfalls. So I'm going to come down in here and have it. Okay, I need a little bit more white. I thought it, the paint was a little drier than that, but it's still wet. So I can use that blue and turquoise and purple there to pull off of. So I'm just going to pull, turn my brush, flip it over. And pull down in here. So you can decide how many waterfalls you want to have. Or you can follow along with what I'm doing in here. I like to have them falling over little rocks and create little tranquil streams. See as the white paint hits the wet paint underneath, the blue, the purple, the green, I pick a little bit of that up along the way. And it's a fun way to create a lot of color effects in your paintings. And then we've got these little bubbly shapes back there. And then I'll turn my brush over this way. And 
have a waterfall wedge in here. I'll take a little bit more white just on the edge of my brush like this. The reason why I turn it over is because I'm starting the waterfalls coming from the left. So let that be a guide for you. Wherever you're going to start your waterfalls from, you want to point in that direction with the longest, pointiest part. So that's why I flip it over when I come over here. And then cut in with some more white. And we'll have a few little layers falling down here. And you can just keep going. Sometimes I like to kind of shake as I'm pulling down my waterfalls. It gives it a little bit more movement. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of my blue with some white. Okay, extra white this time. I turn my brush over. I'm gonna rinse my brush out because it's starting to hold a lot of paint in it and dry. So I just want to make sure that I get all that out of there. I'm going to take a little bit of white and yellow. I'm just going to add the tops of my stairs here. Add a little bit of green down here so it gets just like a little bit darker. It has some moss on some of these stones so that you can walk around. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and my green and I'm going to tap and dab just with the corner of my brush. Some leaves 
mossy bits kind of down here. So it's going to dry darker. And what I'm going to do now is go over to my liner brush, get it wet, take some purple. You want to make sure you have enough water on your brush. Roll it, and that really helps to load it. I'm going to pull in from the right side and add a tree over here, just leaning. So this is how we're going to create some more depth in the painting, creating layers like this. Gentle little wiggles, hardly any pressure. I'll have, oh, I don't know, maybe another little tree right here. Have some graceful branches coming down. I love those trees that almost looks like two trees kind of join together and get that twisted look as they're growing. I'm going to add a little bit of purple around these. They almost kind of look like they could be lily pads. And that's cool too. I kind of like having things in my painting make you wonder what they are. Or it should make you dream a little bit, think. I've got a, a mini mop brush. It's a little stiffer than the other ones. It's shorter. And I want to add some pretty flowers in here. I've got this pink left here. So I'm going to start with a little bit of pink. And we're going to add a pop of color. So I'm going to add the pink. I have no water on my brush. I should mention it's just strictly just straight paint. And I'm going to go partially above on top of that turquoise background. And then a little bit on that bluey dark purple. This is just the first base coat, and it is transparent, the neons. So I'm going to come back over with a little bit of uh, white for a little bit of lighter tones. And I want to add a few down in here as well. And then just a little bit in here, because I think probably, remember, it's just an intuitive fantasy painting, so if you're trying to make sense of it, don't. <laughs> I might have a few little water lilies in here. I don't want to know where the waterfalls end, where they start. I just want it to be like a dream. Okay, so the next color I'm going to take is a little bit of white, and I'm going to take some Blend out a little bit of what's left in my brush, that pink, and then tap out most of the paint. You don't want to have too, too much paint. You want it to look soft. A 
little dabs here and here. And then a little bit more white. And I'll have some trailing down from these waterfalls. And the stairs. Picked up a little bit of purple in there, that'll be pretty. I use a round brush next, and I'm going to take some a little bit of white on the tip of my brush, and I'm just going to add a little scoop down here, and then a few little petals. Twist and roll your brush to get the shape back. Just very impressionistic. We're just trying to create a feeling, not anything hyper-realistic. We just want it to feel dreamy and pretty. And then maybe a few little twist that off with whatever's left in our brush. Maybe a few of these could be little fairies or pixies. See, once you start using your imagination, you start to see more and more. So just making little wings here and then indication of a little figure. Have a little arm coming out, the body, maybe the knees, and the legs going out that way. And then a little bit of white dabs in here. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow too and just kind of dab that in. That'll give us a little bit more color in this area here, make it stand out a little bit more from that soft background. I'm going to add a little bit in there as well. So a little bit of that lemon yellow, a little bit of white. We'll have some light inside of here. Just hitting some of that, these plants and moss and leaves.
There's a little bit of light in here. Just scumbling out the last little bit of lemon yellow and white out of my brush. And then I'll just dab, dab, dab a little bit of white. And then gently pull it up a little bit. I'm adding another color for one of my Holbein Luminous. This is Rose. If you don't have this, you can um, use Magenta. Uh, Quinacridone Violet is very similar. And I'm going to continue using this round brush here. And I'm going to add some little circles. See how it goes over those other colors? They kind of go through and it just looks so pretty. I'm going to add some up here too. We're going to have some our own made up types of flowers. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of white Twist and roll my brush around, get it on the very tip of my brush. And add little loops and lines and scoops. And this will just look like a type of rose. Where you want it to be lighter, obviously just use a little bit more white. And then I'm just coming and add a little bit more of that rose. Add some little buds. And I'll take a little bit of white. So it kind of feels like there's some more little, little pixies or fairies or whatever you want them to be. some 
little stems to these flowers. I'm gonna go back over to my liner brush. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue, some yellow, some purple, a little bit of olive green. I'm going to add a few more flowers in here. Take a little bit of pink, white, and that rose. And we'll add a few more in between. You guys are enjoying this tutorial and don't forget if you are please feel free to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below I love hearing from you guys I'm going to add a few leaves in here. Take a little bit of yellow, blue, and white. Push, wiggle. So it's wider. I kind of like misshapen hearts, so it comes up on the side and then it gets pointier. And you can come in side with a little bit of white. I'm going to add a few large ones on this side. Take a little bit of purple, blue, and yellow. And then a little bit of white, mix that in.
come in with a little bit of purple around here to make them a bit darker. And add a little bit of depth with the purple around these leaves. Just catching the edges of them. Some of the flowers as well. Just going over a little bit of them. Okay, some yellow with my blue. Little bit of white. Okay, I'm going to come over and add a little bit more of a highlight now that this is dry over here. A little bit of white, turquoise and blue with a filter brush. You can use your angle brush if you want. I'm just using this because I have a little bit more control. Now over top of, because I've got those flowers in there. We'll have a little, little castle in here for our fairies. Take a little bit of that yellow a little bit of green in there, that's okay. Just want sort of a light color in between down in this area here. in for a little bit of this green again, the yellow and the blue mixed with some white, a round brush. And just outline these leaves a little bit. I'm going to add a little angel or fairy sitting right here. A little triangle. Comes down. Scoops lightly. Her legs. Shoulder, elbow, hand reaching out, head and neck.
and then a little flick for a wing and then one on the bottom now I don't know what these are that she's holding her arm out or her hand out for maybe they're little butterflies or stardust or something Here's the head right here, other arm, elbow, bottom, knees, and I think I'm going to add um, a little bit of foliage to these branches. I'm going to use my oval mop brush and I think I'll add a little bit of purple first. Maybe a little bit of purple and blue. I love that color combination. So I'm just going to overlap slightly here. And then we'll add some up here as well. Add a little bit along the side here too. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of white and dab that in there. And I'm going to apply this partially over the first layer. So it'll still dry nice and dark, but we're going to have this beautiful color. I've got a little fan brush that I'm going to use to add a little bit of a pattern just to make this look even more dreamlike. I've got my brush wet and I'm going to take white. I want the bristles to separate to make it look more like a rake. That way I'll get a neat pattern. And I'm going to come down, scoop, and go up. I'm just going to take off a little bit of this here. There, I like that better.
and come around the top of here. This is a great brush for also for um, creating waterfalls. I just like to show you guys different brushes um, in my videos so you can always have a brush to use. So I'll just demonstrate here a little bit with a fan brush. So throughout this video, I've shown you a few different brush options for um, creating waterfalls with. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of white again, some pink, some rose. Again, let those bristles separate so it looks like a rake. And I'm going to come up and then scoop. I'll take a little bit of white there I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out Just a little bit more white. I'm gonna tap a little bit over here. Finally, with a little bit of white, rose, pink, and a little bit of purple. To do this, you want to make sure that you have some water on your brush. I'm going to go off the side and scoop. A little bit of purple, green. Okay, well, this painting is all done. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more and leave a comment below and like this video. You can also share this with your friends and painting groups. I want to wish you guys all the best, sending you lots of love and light, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!